So you have a variable speed pool pump. Now what? For a lot of people, it really is going to come down to a basic filtration schedule that they kind of program one time and then more or less leave. Not everyone, in fact, most pool owners will not and do not really take the time to calculate anything with their filtration schedule for their pool. What they're going to end up doing is they're gonna have a filtration schedule that has a few hours at low speed, a few hours at medium speed, and a few hours at high speed. That's kind of the idea, you know? So you're gonna have periods at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, or even max speed. And so what I want to explain to you here is when you program your variable speed pump, you need a couple of hours up in that higher range, you know, the 3000 or 3450 maximum speed. You need that because you're going to have peripheral items on your pool that need more flow, like a, like a gas heater, for example, they need a lot of flow or even the skimmer in your pool needs a lot of flow in the water to function. If, it, if you don't have enough flow, if we just ran our pump at a thousand RPM around the clock, the skimmer is not going to do anything and all the debris is just going to be floating around your pool and that's not fun and it's all going to sink to the bottom and then that's more chlorine and more vacuuming and it's a, it's a whole process. So you need to have a schedule that covers kind of a wide range of different speeds, but there's a couple of things I want you to know about the higher speed settings. When you run the pump on high speed, it is very inefficient. It uses a lot of power and it doesn't move all that much more water than running the pump at a lower speed, which is much more efficient. So you do need some periods at higher speed, maybe between two to four hours per day near maximum speed. And this is what I want to make a point of now. Much like driving a car, if you were to put your foot to the floor on the accelerator, you're going to get very poor fuel economy. If you let up just a tiny bit, so little that you hardly even notice the car is going a little slower, you massively improve your fuel economy. And a pool pump kind of operates in the same way. And I'm going to show you that here. We're going to do a quick check at maximum speed, 3,450. And then I'm going to compare that to 3,000 RPM, just dialed back a little bit. They're both going to move a lot of water, but 3,450 is going to consume quite a bit more power. So when I say there's a couple hours a day that you need to run at a higher RPM, two to four hours a day, perhaps, I don't think that unless you absolutely need the maximum 3450, if you don't need that flow rate, then I would say go ahead and just do 3000. And I'm going to show you here. So let's ramp this up and let's go take a look at our flow rates. The system set up for two inch plumbing right now. And we're getting just over a hundred gallons per minute for our troubles. 102, 103, so about 102 and a half. The pump is consuming 2.3 kilowatt hours, the number in the top right corner. So that's very interesting. 2.3 kilowatt hours for about a hundred gallons per minute, just over a hundred. First of all, it's a lot quieter at 3000 versus 3450. So we lost, you know, 15, 16 gallons per minute or so. But we've dropped down to only 1.53 kilowatt hours. So again, we've dropped down a small amount in terms of the total flow but we've dropped down quite a bit in the amount of power that's being consumed. And you can see the real-time draw of amperage on the left at 6.7 amps for this pump at 86 gallons per minute. So let's go ahead and drop this down a little lower, 2000 RPM. 2000 RPM is kind of what I consider the mid-range speed. And you're gonna need a couple hours a day at that higher speed but you're gonna need maybe double that amount at a mid-range speed. And this is going to give you time for, you know, a lot of smaller pools to have heaters uh, to work, but more commonly salt systems. If you have a, a salt chlorinator cell, 
it needs an appreciable amount of flow to close the, the mechanical switch and create chlorine. And it also needs quite a few hours per day to do that. And so for a lot of pools, you're going to find that there's, you know, if you did two to four hours per day at the high speed, you're going to do maybe four to eight hours per day at this mid range speed, 2000 RPM. Let's take a look at the flow rates we're achieving here. Again, a very impressive number, 55 gallons per minute. Interestingly, that is approximately the, the point of efficiency loss with a two inch PVC system. 55 gallons per minute in two inch PVC corresponds to approximately six feet per second of water velocity. Beyond this point, there is a sharp decrease in the efficiency of the system. It, it becomes more inefficient. Water becomes turbulent. The friction of the water traveling through the pipe starts to add up and work against the system. So this is an interesting number that we've achieved here with our 2000 RPM, 55 gallons per minute. This is the maximum threshold for efficient flow through a two inch PVC pipe. Looking towards the power consumption here, we're seeing just a shade over 500 Watts. 2.3 amps. Remember we were just over six amps when we were up at 3000 RPM and we dropped that down to 2.3. Well, the flow rate only dropped down to 55. And so that brings us down to low RPM. Now, low RPM is going to depend on your pool. You could be 750, could be a thousand, could be 1200. Um, I'm just going to go with a thousand because it's a nice round number here. And basically we're going to have a couple of hours a day at the higher RPM, maybe double that amount at the mid range RPM. And then the rest of the day, run your pump at the low RPM speed. You don't want to turn your pump off. If you have a variable speed pump, never turn it off. It doesn't need to be turned off. Every, every hour you're running at a low speed like this, you're getting super cost effective filtration of your water. So you want to run it the majority of the day at a low RPM like this, because take a look at the power consumption here. 130 Watts, barely one amp, one amp of current draw ridiculously low. And look how much flow you get that for that almost 30 gallons per minute for one amp of current draw. That's amazing efficiency. And that's the basis behind variable speed pumps is you want to create a 24 hour cycle that has periods of time at higher speeds, has longer periods of time at mid speeds, depending on what your system needs. And then the rest of the day, you want to run the pump on your low RPM settings to achieve a lot of filtration for not very much money at all. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.